so this is how you're going to uh, start off. So all I've done is I've taken um, a piece of wood and squared it off, rectangle, doesn't matter. Um, so you've got the four corners. And all we're doing to start off is I've drawn the shape of the bottom of the hat um, that I want it to have. And over here is where I imagine the elbows of the arms are going to be. So all we're going to start off with is taking some cut, sweeping cuts up from the elbow to the bottom of the hat. Just using stop cut and then a sweeping cut up. And then taking out that material. So it's just a range of stop cuts to take away that material so that we're not taking anything off the hat just yet. So you're going to do that on both sides. Okay, so you can see that we've taken in these two sections here from the elbow up to the hat. Now, the next bit is we're going to shape the, the head with the hat on. So it's up to you how you want to draw it. Um, if you want it to have a bit of a a curve you can have it going on either side you can see mine going off onto the left hand side there uh, but yeah that is really up to you you can do it however you want and then once we've got that shape we're just going to start taking away the material not inside those black pen lines starting to shape that uh, head so I'm just going to start by using some chest lever cuts just to get away the main bulk of the material and then once we get closer to the shape we can do some more gentler cuts you can see we've got this nice little curve going over now on this side um, of this I wear it curves in uh, I'm just going to do some push cuts from either side because if you going too heavy handed with this you could just take the whole top of the um, top of the hat off so you don't want to go in with a chest lever because it will just rip the whole top off so just doing some curving push cuts with my thumb there switching from one side to the other to take off that material okay so now we've got the general shape of the uh, of the hat there just going to profile the nose so where I've made this mark this is the bottom of the nose so I'm just going to do a stop cut there I'm just gonna go up to the bridge of that nose sorry not the bridge the bottom of the nose taking away the material underneath it See, it's starting to poke out there. And now we're just going to create a little, um, little bridge of the hat coming over the eyes. So we're just going to take away, we're just going to do a couple of stop cuts along these two black uh, lines that create that upside down V. And we're just going to do little cuts up towards there, just so the hat looks like it's, um, the brim of the hat is coming over his eyes. And over his nose so we're just going to lead our way up just starting with a couple of small stop cuts and very carefully doing some push cuts up to it again nothing too forceful just stop cut and then pushing up and like I said this is just creating the brim of the hat that he's wearing. So you can see we're just coming underneath that that brim. So we'll do it on this side now. Same thing again with a stop cut. And then just gently pushing up. As you get deeper in it becomes easier. It's just as you get in that initial uh, initial depth that you just want to be a bit more careful so you can 
see I've just gone underneath and the deeper you go the more prominent it becomes um, so the next bit I'm going to do is I'm just going to take away some material around the nose I've, I've just moved to a, sm a slightly smaller knife uh, just for just to get around these corners um, so all I'm going to do is just start shaping the nose and to do that again I'm just taking away the material ra material around it so that the nose stands out I'm just going to take some off the bridge so that the nose is sloping backwards I'm not going to take too much off because the more you take off the less prominent it sticks out the best, best way to do that is to take away material around the sides okay so you can see we've taken material out here a bit more underneath it material out here and we're just angling the bridge of the nose slightly backwards so it looks like it's coming from underneath the brim of the hat there now we're going to go on to the bed. So again, how you draw your bed is up to you. You can have it more straight, you can have it slightly curving. But I'm just going to go down right here like this. And on the other side as well. And all this black line is showing me is where I'm going to put my stop cuts. Because it's going to be the same thing again, just like the nose and the rim. We're going to put a stop cut in and then just take away a little bit of material around it just so it sticks out. So just so it puts the beard into relief. I'm actually going to switch to this knife, I think, or because I'm not taking as much material away, so I don't want to be as heavy handed. Now if you want to know what type of knives uh, I'm using to detail like this knife I absolutely have no clue. These were passed on to me from my granddad. They don't have any maker's mark or name on them uh, but they're good. My, uh, my granddad has a, a habit of collecting tools, doing them up and then sending them over to countries that need them. Um, obviously some tools are not needed so he's, he passes them on. Uh, to me if I can use them. So these were in one of his collections of tools that weren't going over. Um, but because they were just donated to him, obviously he doesn't know where they came from either. But they do the job. But yeah, I'm, uh, I apologise, that can't give you any information on the knives that I'm, uh, I'm using. But there's lots of good um, knife brands for carving out on the market. I think FlexiCut is a, a main brand that a lot of people use, so that's a good place to start. I don't own a FlexiCut because I've just been using um, these while I've been carving because they do the job. So I'm doing some stop cuts and then taking away the material just behind, or just in front of that stop cut. Okay, now the next bit, I'm just going to go back to my large knife because um, if you remember from, the, from before, we took out the material between the top of the shoulders and the hat. And we're just going to do the same thing now from the bottom of the arm um, going down to the bottom. So again, it's just going to be a, a um, bit of a swooping cut down to the bottom just to make a similar shape you see there so it dips in comes out for the elbow and then it's going to dip back in one of the things I love about these uh, this type of carving with wood spirits and gnomes is that every single one that you do comes out slightly different. It doesn't matter if you do it slightly differently to the way I've done it. It does not matter. It doesn't matter if it's completely uniform as well, that's what gives it its uh, uniqueness. And I'm just going to take off this, uh, this front 
what was the edge leading down to the corner of the piece of wood just around off the beard a bit more okay, and you'll be able to soften things up a bit more with the sandpaper there we go just so there's not a uh, as much of a ridge coming down so it's nice to have the ridge on the bridge of the nose and like the tip of the uh, hat there um, but you can take it out on the on the beard uh, I'm just going to swing around to the other side um, to do the back of the hat uh, you can draw this on um, and again it doesn't matter what shape you go for so there's the where the hat comes on it can be a low hat it could be a, it can be just a straight one okay and that's doing the same thing again we're just going to take away the material I'm going to take away the material uh, down the hole um, of the back of the gnome uh, just again so it's overhanging again not loads it helps if you want to do that you stop cuts as well you can do the stop cuts but just like we did on the front we want to bring that uh, bridge of the hat into uh, relief so we're just going to go from those black lines making cuts away from it so that it hangs over the gnome's back So you can see the hat overhangs the back of the body and again you can just take this down and you've, you've sort of rounded off the uh, back there as well. Okay, so now we're going to move on to uh, defining his arms a bit more. Um, so we're going to imagine that his hands are in his, in his pocket so we're just going to create a little V, v shape here. Okay so this is going to be his arm coming around and then going into into a sort of pocket here and the same thing on the other side just creating that that gap between the arm and the body as if he's got his hands in his pockets there and then all we're going to do again is take these black lines as, as stop cuts and we're just going to take away the material inside this V here going, leading up to the beard so that the arm is left raised up from the rest of the wood. So I'm just going to go up to those stop cuts, taking away that material and we're just going to do the same thing with these I'm just going to go along this line and just come up to that ever so slightly just so that's a bit raised upwards so just come on these black lines underneath the elbows just to define them a bit more and then the last bit is I'm just going to um, create a bit of a base some people like to create some feet but I think I'm just going to round off the base <laughs> Gnome, whatever you want to call them. Quite a easy, um, easy projects around the fire uh, to do when you're next out or when you're next at camp. Easy steps to uh, to follow, and the outcome is quite satisfying. So the one on the left is the one I've just done now. And the one on the right is one I did at the last uh, craft camp. If you so the video that I put up, you can see they're very similar uh, in some ways, but you can see the hat's different, the sizing si sizing is different, the type of wood's different. Um, so even though you're following the same steps, you're still going to have some minor differences. 
Uh, there's still some to finishing off to do on this one just to neaten it all up. I need a better tool to get into the finer spots underneath the hat and in between his arms. Might be a Dremel job that. Um, but as for now, I'm happy. So if you liked that video, if you liked uh, whistling your own gnome, then please give it a like and please subscribe. It really does help letting me know what type of things you are after. And I'll see you on the next one. Thank you.